everyone, it's Jacob. As many of you know, I recently started a podcast with my wife called the BYOB Podcast. And we recently put up an episode where we talked about seven things that you need to know to go off on your own uh, before you, seven things you need to know how to do if you want to become an entrepreneur. And I thought I would make a video kind of going over what those seven things are because sometimes it's a little bit more fun to look at things in a video format instead of just listening to it uh, via podcast. So these are the seven things that I wish I knew when I went off on my own around 15 years ago. And these are the seven things that we figured out are really uh, essential things that you need to know how to do if you are considering going off on your own and becoming an entrepreneur. And this is true whether you're looking to uh, be a speaker or an author or whether you're looking to build an app or to create some actual products. So let's jump into the seven things you need to know how to do. Uh, the first one is self-motivate. If you have a full-time job, you're probably used to having somebody who is telling you what you need to work on, they're checking in with you on updates. Somebody's constantly there to push you, to motivate you, to probably even annoy you a little bit. But when you work for yourself, you don't have anybody like that. And so you need to be able to motivate and to drive and to push yourself. Uh, it's very easy, for example, to just wanna uh, sit at home every day and watch Netflix and play video games and you know just kind of chill out and not do much. So you need to be able to have that drive to push yourself to to work hard each day to get things done that you need to get done. So you need to have that mentality, that personality. So that's a very important thing for you to uh, for you to um, to think about and a very important thing for you to uh, need to know how to do push and motivate yourself. The second thing is being self-aware. And being self-aware really means understanding what your strengths and weaknesses are. What can you do versus what you cannot do? And this comes into play especially when you consider uh, bringing in a team and when you consider hiring others. Uh, this is something that I had to figure out over a while because I, I thought that I could do everything myself, uh, do all the projects myself. and. Uh, this became a very, very hard thing for me to overcome. And eventually I knew that there are just a lot of things that I'm not good at and um, that I need help with things. And so I brought in other people who are much better at me at various things like um, creating proposals, for example, or doing accounting or finance or any of that kind of stuff that I was doing, but I wasn't really good at. So be self-aware, understand what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what zaps your energy, what exhausts you, uh, these are really, really, I think, essential elements for any entrepreneur to know uh, when you are considering going off um, on your own. So be self-aware. Next is managing your highs and lows. This is another one that took some time for me to figure out. And it's important because managing your highs means that let's say you have a great quarter or a great month and you make a ton of money. You make thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. It's very tempting to all of a sudden say, oh my God, I've made it. And you, you know, maybe you go out and you start spending thousands of dollars. Uh, that's a very bad example of how to not manage a high. And conversely, the opposite is true. If you have a bad month or a bad quarter, it's very tempting to say, oh, you know what, I should quit, this isn't for me. That's a terrible way to manage a low. And so you want to avoid having these kind of like big spikes all the time, right? I mean, you wanna have maybe little ones or kind of try to stay consistent in the middle whenever you can. But when you get a um, you know big project, when you make a lot of money, don't, don't go crazy and don't go spend it all and you know just go bonkers with it. Understand that as an entrepreneur, you're gonna have some good months, some bad months. You're gonna have some great quarters, you're gonna have some bad quarters. So when you do have a great, uh, a great month or a great quarter, save some of that money for a rainy day. You know, splurge on, you know, go out to a nice dinner or something, but don't go spend all of that money on something uh, so that it just kind of disappears. Similarly, when you have a bad quarter or a bad month, don't immediately think that everything is over and you gotta quit. You know, for me, for example, in the, the world of speaking, it's a very cyclical business. And during summer, things get quiet. So if I were to start my speaking career, let's say, for example, in uh, April or May, I would probably think, hey, you know what? I'm terrible. Nobody wants to book me. But the reality is that for July, August, September, it's pretty quiet. There's not a lot of stuff happening. You know, there are a couple of things here and there, but not that much. And if I wouldn't wait through that summer, I would probably just quit beforehand. 
So you really need to understand the highs and lows, understand how your business operates and try to kind of balance yourself out um, to make sure that you don't have these really crazy swings. The next one that I wanna talk about is boundaries. Something else I really had to figure out because when I went off on my own, I would have a lot of people who would ask me things like, uh, hey, can we schedule some time with you to pick your brain? Do you wanna just jump on a call and have a chat? Why don't you attend our event? We'll give you a free pass. And I would say yes to literally everything. And by the time my day would be done and my week would be over, I would realize that I didn't actually get anything done. So boundaries is really about understanding how to say no. You say no to other people and to other things so that you can basically say yes to um, to yourself. Say yes to the things that you want to do. Say yes to the things that, um, that you want to focus on. It's really, really important to know how to have these boundaries. Uh, and I wish that this is something I figured out earlier on because I probably spent several years saying yes to everything and ended up really not getting much done until I finally figured out that magic word of saying no and drawing and creating those boundaries. Next is running a business. This is again, I mean, these are all seven things I've struggled with. This is no exception. You might be a great speaker, a great marketer, a great developer. That is not the same thing as running a business. I mean, this is something that I felt like I got smacked in the face when I had to um, start to learn this stuff. I was very good at marketing at the time, you know, 15 years ago. I was good at like search engine optimization stuff, but I didn't know anything about how to make a website. I didn't know anything about paying quarterly taxes. I didn't know anything about contracts and proposals and sending invoices. I had to learn these things, these like aspects of running a business that had nothing to do with what my core skill set was. So you need to remember that when you become an entrepreneur, it's not just about being good at the one thing that you're doing, uh, whether it's speaking or writing or marketing or designing apps, you need to learn all the other things that are required to run a business. Contracts, proposals, selling, building a website, logo, creating content, like all of these things are a part of the business that a lot of people typically don't talk about. So just remember, um, being an entrepreneur, for me, at least in my mind, equals running a business. The two are the same because you're gonna need to learn about all of these other things that are here. Uh, next, number six, is this aspect of taking risks. Um, this is inherent with being an entrepreneur. Regardless of the stage of life that you're in, you need to be able to be confident in yourself to be able to take risks. I don't mean doing dumb things, but th taking calculated risks, right? Thinking about things. Um, even going off on your own is a calculated risk. For example, when I went off on my own, I made sure that I had enough money in my bank account to sustain me for a period of around nine months, and only then did I jump ship from my full-time job and go off on my own. I didn't just get mad one day at my boss and say, the hell with you, I'm quitting, and you know, kind of go off on my own after that. That would be a bad risk. So as an entrepreneur, when you go off on your own, you're gonna to need to be comfortable and you're gonna to need to learn to take risks, to take calculated risks. Uh, you're gonna to have to be bold, you're gonna to have to be courageous, you're gonna to have to get outside of your comfort zone. So that's something that you're gonna to need to really be comfortable with. If you're just used to safe, what works, you know, that kind of mentality, you're gonna really struggle when it comes to uh, being an entrepreneur and running your, own, uh, running your own business. The next thing, you gotta be a people person. Um, business and uh, organizations. I mean, everything is still very much dependent upon people and relationships. And again, it doesn't matter what you're good at or how many different things that you know, at the end of the day, you are working with and you are selling to people. So you need to be a people person. Uh, you know, in an organization, you could be an engineer who never interfaces with a customer and you don't necessarily need to be a people person because you have a sales team. You have a customer service team who handles that for you. When you're an entrepreneur, when you're running your business, you are everything, which means that you need to be a people person, even if it's not something that you are used to. Because when you close a deal, you're gonna need to build the relationships with people. If somebody tells you that a deal got canceled, which has happened to me many times, you can't just lose your marbles and say, oh, the hell with you, how could you, how dare you, we had a deal and you, right? You gotta just kind of bite your lip and say, okay, that's fine, I understand, I hope we can work together again in the future. Something I've had to do many times. So you do need to be a people person when you go off on your own, when you become an entrepreneur and run your business. Because as I mentioned, 
this is, I mean, entrepreneurship, running a business is fundamentally a people business, regardless of what it is that you are doing. So these are the seven things that you need to know how to do. These are the seven things that I want to encourage you to think about and master when you are thinking of becoming an entrepreneur, going off on your own, running your own business, or as Blake and I like to say, be your own boss. So I hope you found that useful and informative and valuable and make sure to check out byobpodcast.com. This is where we put up all of our episodes. This is also where you can go to connect with us. And if you have any questions that you want us to answer, either on live when we do our live streams or via the audio version of the podcast, you can get in touch with us over there. Again, that's byobpodcast.com. And I hope you found these seven useful, or I hope you found these seven things useful. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know how you are practicing these things. And is there, is there anything else that you would add to this list? Hope you're having a wonderful day. See you soon.